A new type of computer could soon change civilization as we know it. 60 Minutes correspondent Scott Pelly traveled to California to learn more about Google's quantum computing lab. Take a look. This machine can create nearly the coldest conditions in the universe at about 460 degrees below zero. In that environment, a radically new kind of computer may change civilization as we know it. We're looking at a race between China, between IBM, Google, Microsoft, Honeywell, because the nation or company that does this will rule the world economy. And joining me now here in Studio 57 is Henry Ewan. He's an assistant professor of computer science at Columbia University. We're so glad to have you. Thanks for being with us, Henry. Thanks for having me. So I want to start with the big question because there's lots of folks, including myself, don't really understand. So for those who didn't watch the 60 Minutes episode last night, can you just explain to us what quantum computing really means? Sure. So quantum computers are a fundamentally new kind of computer uh, that can solve certain kinds of calculations in a split second, mm -hmm. uh, calculations that might take uh, our best supercomputers millions of years uh, to solve today. Okay, and what are some potential benefits to using technology like this? Obviously, it's going to expedite the process of whatever we're trying to accomplish. Yeah, so here's there's going to be uh, good news and, and bad news. Uh, so let me start with the good news. Sure. Uh, quantum computers have an amazing potential to really advance uh, research and development in, in a lot of areas say uh, materials design or pharmaceuticals or biology, chemistry, you name it. Um, you know, for example, we hope that with quantum computers, uh, we can design more effective drugs or design new kinds of batteries for our EVs. Mm, okay, it, it, and we heard it in this clip, it kind of sounds like there is this race between the big tech companies, you know, IBM, Google, Microsoft, Honeywell, to be the first to come out with this technology. Talk about what this will look like in the real world applications. Yeah, so it's uh, really the early days of quantum computing. There's a long road ahead with uh, huge engineering and scientific challenges. But the hope is, you know, maybe by the end of this decade, uh, maybe longer, that we'll be able to get large scale quantum computers uh, to really solve some of the most pressing challenges for, um, say, engineering or science or, or, or pharmaceuticals. What kind of challenges might there be in, in not in just development, uh, but in the rollout of technology like this? Well, there, there's a couple of challenges. Uh, one is, uh, you know, first of all, it's just really tough to build. You need to cool these things down to, you know, near absolute zero wow. uh, to make them work so far. Um, so people are currently figuring out how to um, uh, make this possible in, in a near term. How far away are we, do you think, from that reality where this can be part of our lives? Uh, it's hard to say. Uh, I mean, the optimistic take is maybe by the end of the decade, we can really see something useful from uh, quantum computers. Um, and personally, I think maybe uh, 10 to 15 years is, is possibly realistic. Mm. And what will this mean for jobs, for the economy? We see things like ChatGPT changing every facet of how people work, how people live, how people study. What kind of impact could technology like this have on our lives? Uh, I think it could have a huge impact. Uh, I mean, one of the things that I'm really excited to see is just the uh, amount of interest in quantum computing uh, that's appearing. Mm. So at Columbia University, where I teach, uh, the number of students who are interested in taking my intro to quantum computing class is just growing year after year. And uh, because of that, I think because of the bright young people who are getting into the field, uh, I think that, you know, uh, we're going to make the most exciting discoveries about it in the upcoming years. And what about the dangers of this kind of technology? We see how ChatGPT in its early stages is sort of working through some of those kinks. What kind of problems could we encounter here? Yeah, so, uh, you know, like I mentioned, uh, there's some bad news of, about quantum computers when they get rolled out. So unfortunately, uh, when they uh, come online, uh, they'll be able to break all of the encryption schemes that mm. we use today to, say, protect our emails, um, secure our credit card information. Uh, but there is some silver lining. Uh, government agencies and computer scientists are working on replacement encryption schemes uh, to protect our data uh, in the event that quantum computers just are right around the corner. Okay, very fascinating. Thanks so much for this, Henry. We appreciate this.